welcome to the NEC Classic Car Show 2023 here on the XJS Club stand. The white 1986 Jaguar XJSC Cabriolet. We also have the 1986 Daimler XJS 5.3 litre V12. We are also joined by a 1993 Jaguar XJS Coupe. This is a 6 litre variant. have a 1981 Jaguar XJS pre-HE 5.3 litre V12. On the end of the row of XJS here we have a 1985 Jaguar XJS TWR Coupe. Just at the rear of the stand we have a fantastic 1982 Jaguar XJS HE V12 Lister Special. So here's, here's how I talk about uh, this wonderful uh, Lister. So this is a, is it a 1983 car, is that right? No, it's actually no. 1982, this. 1982, so okay. So it's um, originally manufactured in 1982. That'd be an HE when it came out of the factory, yeah? It's the first of the HEs as well, so there are okay. some, some strange anomalies on this in the oh, It's got right. some of the pre-HE as well as the, the HE parts in it, like the oh, auto okay. bottle. Yep. The, the floor yep. pumps are actually HE, uh, pre-HE, so uh, they were using, using the parts bit, I think, really, was the, the story I've been told there. Yes. Um, but it was converted in 1986 to a Lister. So that's now. with uh, Lawrence Pierce's company down in Surrey, is that right? WP yeah. Automotive. Uh, is that right? It was WP Automotive, which um, I think Lawrence was running it, and Warren Pierce being his father, I believe, at the time. Yeah. So we've got the, um, the invoices, we've got the, the price list, we've got all the bits and bobs. Wow. Um, giving provenance as well there. Um, um, it's, it's ended up a labour of love. It never intended to be that way, I have to say. Okay. Um, Interesting. When do you get the car then? So, it started off in the 80s, had the list of conversions. Is it one big conversion or is it done in stages, do you know? It was, um, it was done in two sections, actually. Just so, okay. it, we, we see the invoices that there was a uh, the initial body kit, there was uh, the lowing springs, and then it went back and they, they saved up a bit of money and they they did more modifications to the engine there with wide throttle bodies, TT exhaust, things like that. So it, it's, it sort of entered my life in about 2017, the end of. Oh wow, quite recent, relatively, to the car's history, okay. So, yeah, and um, I think the easiest way to, to actually describe the condition was that it was a dodgy MOT failure. Wow. It um, was absolutely rotten to the core as the extensive gallery of pictures that we've uh, we've got yes, to see uh, some of them will sort of indicate how bad it really was. Um, main reason was because Lister in their wisdom there decided that the body kit needed to have absorbent foam. Back ah, it. now so, that played later Jaguars as well, absorbent foam, didn't it? Exactly. Sound editing pumps is, I yeah. think, isn't it? Stop the vibration, etc. Yes. Well, fortunately, all that did was actually then trap moisture in there and then it's eaten away the bottom half of the car, which you yeah. can't tell until you start peeling back the layers, which is where um, Laszlo, my um, uh, a very good friend and now business partner of the Classic Mechanic, enters the whole story. Got it. So this is where we get in the Classic uh, Mechanic, Hungry, I think, isn't it? That's correct. How did that story come about? Where did you form that? So, um, I realised quite quickly that I'd bought a uh, wreck of a car uh, luckily, I didn't spend too much money on it, but we we um, um, we met really because a friend of mine said there's a guy in Macclesfield. He wasn't in Hungary at the time, then. Yeah. The guy in Macclesfield, I believe, is exceptionally good. He's just started in restoration garage. He used to be a restorer in Hungary. So I went went round to see Lars. Lars confirmed all my worst nightmares about the car, and um, initially he said, "Can we just repair it again? This this you know in some kind of decent condition." What I hadn't actually really appreciated at that time is that the, the Lars is an OCD perfectionist in a good way. Yes, so <laughs> He doesn't just do patch up, mend and repairs. Really. So as we started peeling back, we found more and more, more problems with it. And um, I, I then at the end said, well, look, we need now to move it towards a full blown restoration at this stage rather than just patching repair. OK. Yeah, indeed. Interesting. So, um, we, uh, we very rapidly became good friends, me and Lars. Uh, he was just around the corner probably at the time there. 
Uh, about 2019, Lars and his two, uh, his wife and two daughters, he's got yeah. twins actually, now, now 10. Um, his, him and his uh, lovely family decided they were going to go back to Hungary, which um, struck me with terror there because yeah. we hadn't finished my car completely at that point then. Oh, um, okay. So I said, well, you know, I, I, I would like to invest in your your business. So I've got, luckily got several businesses that yep. uh, enable me to actually do that. Doors yeah. myself in uh, in these kind of things. Brilliant. And uh, we 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 have run the business ever since 2019 over in Hungary. Wow. Taking cars, not just from the UK, but from Germany as well. In particular, we've got them over there, and specialising in entry S and E types. That's our. Uh, Red Butter and Land Rovers, when we had Land Rovers, Land Rovers. one Land Rover as well, that's just Excellent. that. But, uh, XGS is our, our special favourite, actually, because of this. Absolutely. So this one really is a sort of no expense spared project that you've really undertaken yeah. here. Obviously, it takes a long time to go through everything that's been done here, but what's the key things, what are the sort of key stages you went through to get it to its fabulous condition? So, th this, this is a labour of love. Uh, there is no logical primary reason for me to spend the amount of money, money. even as the co-owner of the business yeah. there. I, I want to get it for free there because no. last still has to make a living for his family. Of course. Um, he's about 4,000 hours of work in this because I said to Lass, maybe foolishly, what could you do if there was no cap to your budget? And this is the guy who's got the OCD and the real attention for detail well, as well. Slow is out, the, um, <laughs> probably, if not definitely, one of the best stores in the world because... Yes. That's not something I'm saying, it's not what the restorers are saying. They're sort of saying, he's the restorer of the store, in a way. And Google Revival was, was a uh, bit of an eye opener for the last when he came over to that show and um, was literally stunned at the reaction to his, the, the, the volume of his work. So, what we've done on here is stripped absolutely the entire car thing. Yep. back to bare metal. Every, I, I don't say nut and bolt, I just say nut bolt washer. Yeah. Because Lars has stripped down every component, including things like the heater matrix. Wow. The starter motor has been into a gazillion pieces there. This has just been a jigsaw of immense proportions that have been re uh, either media blasted, it has been then zinked, it's either been anodized, been painted. Um, so it's actually better than the car would have ever, ever left the production line in Brown Lane there in, in Jaguar. So, um, uh, on the, on the way, we've done a little bit of retro modding, not a great deal really. We've made the brakes better, safer, made the suspension adjustable, a little oh, bit okay. safer. Yeah. The, um, the the legend who is um, Roger Bywater of AJ6 yeah. Engineering, he lives very close to where I live in Macclesfield. Roger has been you know, a font of knowledge for, for Lars, always on the end of the phone, because Roger was one of the original designers. Oh, yes. and most interestingly, Roger was the one of the original consultants before this consultants for Lister in 1985 86. Oh, I didn't realise there's a connection between Roger and Lister back in the 80s. That's interesting. It was indeed, yeah. So uh, he's, again, he, he, he's just a, a massive, of information. massive mind yeah. of information there that we tried. Somehow we need to try and get all the information out of Roger. We do. Uh, one book that probably doesn't do justice, yeah, I'm sure. Some stuff though, so it's going to be difficult, you know. So. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Excellent. Now, I can tell the quality of detail for sometimes where you have the aftermarket kits. I mean, there's obviously the Arden, Conan, Zeg, a whole number of hyper transformations. But I think the quality of the of the body kit that's gone around this is quite superb. And I'll make sure we get some footage and some pictures of it. But the quality is exceptional. And, and what about these wheels as well? They, these these look amazing. The, these are the iconic list of wheels. So I mean, I think we we probably get as much attention about the body of the car as we do the wheels. Actually, I mean, the, everybody comes up and always nods and says, "Well, I love the wheels there." So these, these, are, these are the list of Copper Motives. Um, Copper Motive, I believe, became Image Wheels. Ah, okay, um, Image Wheels. We, we, um, image Wheels have been fantastic with us. They have actually created the new split wheels because we wanted to make them slightly bigger. So we wanted 17 inch, not 16s. So yes. they've taken the original sensors but made brand new. They spoke to fit the space of the, uh, the arches, which um, Laz did a very great deal deal technical information and I passed on to them. Yes. Um, so they, they've been involved anyway, so we, we've, we've gone back to the original factory in a way to actually get them refurbished. Fantastic. They, they certainly do set the car up very nicely yeah. indeed. And I think another thing that really draws the eye is actually the interior. Yeah. And I 
got some photos where we've actually got the Nisbin fossil. How's that done? It, it looks amazing. Well, I, 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 sorry, Lars, I'm going to have to actually share some of the information. Yeah. He's, he's <laughs> told me before, you know, uh, under the threat of near death. Oh dear. Um, so there, there are actually um, letters that have been laser cut out um, that then Lars uses to emboss. Now, how he actually does that, I don't know either. So he's trade secret. Man. Uh, right. I'm, I'm the voice behind the camera, I'm the front man. Yeah. I'm not the really gifted <laughs> individual that that is. Uh, yeah, it, I mean, the door cards have to be remade because all door cards and XGSs are either wavy as the sea or they're completely rotted. And the door cards on this work seem exactly that. They're really it's rotted. It's very common. So we, um, with their brand new, he's. Yes, the first of that. Yeah, He's cool. added added the Lister in there. It wasn't part of the original car, but the Lister embossing on the, the car was is is just part of the original there as well. So we, we, again, another little bit of a nod to um, how it should have been really the, uh, at the time then. Um, you know, not not the Lister of the the eighties there, but I don't think they really ever thought these cars would be here. No, forty odd years later. No, money. probably not. Worth the, the amount of money that listers actually are. You know, that's it. Well, indeed, absolutely. And this one, I think, is a very usable one because it's I think it's the original 5.3, but it's got all of the AJ6 engineering enhancements on the hood. So that's similar yeah, to my XJ. So I think the wide throttle bodies, the revised air intakes. Yeah, uh, tuning trumpets and a TT extractor exhaust, which makes an amazing sound. Sadly, we won't be able to demonstrate it in the hall, <laughs> but it makes an amazing sound. Maybe we'll be getting some for your channel. But yeah, uh, yeah. It, looks, it looks superb, and I think the finish and quality of the nut and bolt restoration is really evident against the footage um, of, of the engine bay. Absolutely amazing quality. So. It, it is, and, and you know, the um, we we could have we could have taken shortcuts, but we didn't. No, Lars doesn't do shortcuts. No. What he does is perfection, and he has a very subtle way of making me join him in this journey of perfection. Because yes. what I suggest to him is there a cheaper way there, and he says, "Well, there is, but you know, will he be able to sleep at night?" And of course, that's the ultimate <laughs> persuasion you need there. Because yes, you know, I will probably wouldn't be. Um, so you, you get to that certain point, and you know, cost doesn't become actually part of it. But the, the the whole point of this was to actually then allow. Was the artist to yes. actually then paint the best picture he possibly could without any restriction on budget, and that's that's the job. So outstanding. It was no result, you know, no result. He's done it for me. I don't sell any my cars. It's, it's beautiful. So interestingly, what have you got in the workshop at the moment? What's been coming through next? Right. Well, we've we've obviously become relatively famous for Jaguar XGSs now, and we're we're attracting them uh, from all over the place. We've got um, a Jaguar XGS Arden. So the German... Very rare. Yeah, really? indeed. Um, this is from a, uh, it's a left-hand drive. Uh, German customer of ours called Stefan there. And he saw us on social media, the internet, got in touch and said, I believe you're the only guys that can do this. So we've got wow. that in the workshop at the moment. We've got a Jaguar XJRS that's just come over from the UK. Okay. So that one is waiting for, for restoration. That's the first press car that was used in the NEC. Um, so there's a bit of a story behind that one as well. Yeah. We've also got uh, the a, a Jaguar XGS that was actually driven by Diana Rigg, or owned by Diana Rigg, oh, of the wow. Avengers. Okay. So a good yeah. point out, Avengers. Avengers, the later yeah. Avengers, the earlier yeah. Avengers, not the later ones. Yes. Yeah. Um, there has been a bit of confusion about that. <laughs> oh. um, so uh, we're doing that car up for a, um, a lovely customer called Robert McAlpine. Robert, he, this car was his, his father's. It's his father's car, and this is again a labour block. We're doing it in this sort of style and condition because he wants a memorial, you know. And that's the beauty is that the XGS owners that we, we we meet at the moment there, they're not they're not people who want to flip a car and make money out of it because you're not going to do that. A long term commitment to the car. It is. If somebody wants a long term commitment to the car, that's that's a, you know the nice nice part about it. You know, we're meeting lovely people with it as well. Um, right, but so. we've also got my Jaguar XGS. Uh, Lister Mark III 
wide body. Wide body, it's quite different from this, isn't it? Yeah. Thank you for seeing some photos of us, Yes, well, yes, uh, feel free to share them there. Yes, thank uh, you. That one we're going to bring to the Marv show here. Excellent. So then it's going to whisk its way over to Hungary at the same time. Then. Hope we're going to get your last come over as well. I think it is. That should be the man, yeah. Uh, had the fear of flying there, so we may have to, uh, <laughs> we may have to do the Mr. T on it. We'll have yeah. to uh, give him a glass of milk to do away from Manchester. We'll, we'll work on that one. Because um, uh, it's a long two and a half thousand mile round trip in a golf. Yes, so, uh, it is, it is. But um, that, that one's the last finished lister for the battery, Rory Merchant, last April. Um, exciting, it's one of one of one early um, in, the, in the sense that it's the last one. It's, it's yet to be finished. No interior. Engine's been done, it's been dyno by Ford Engineering. Really? One BC stable at that time then. Wow. So, yeah, it's an exciting one then. We're going to do the same treatments as this car. Uh, it doesn't need as much work, no. to be glad to say, but That's good. he's still way, way off to be finished as well. So, Fantastic. Yeah. Cool. Really, really good. Well, it's been an absolute pleasure to talk to you, Simon. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thanks, Richard. Thank you. Good. So, here we have a marvellous 1992. Jaguar XJ40, a 4 litre sovereign in remarkable condition. Uh, AJ6 engine there. You'll notice the speaker position is quite different from my 1994 model. It also has a glove box rather than the airbag which is fitted on mine. And you can see the uh, steering wheel there, quite different from the later 1994 95 models. In fine condition, wonderful trim, and the paint condition is outstanding. That glorious kingfisher blue. So then, uh, Bill, uh, lovely to see your car here today. Uh, tell us a little bit about it. It's a 1980 model, isn't it? Yes, it's a P digital manual, first registered March 1981. Okay. And well, what's special about the P digital? Uh, it's got the increased compression from eight to one to ten to one. Okay. Uh, high compression. Is it still flathead or? Is it um, the top or is it HE style head scheme? No, it's, it's flat head. Flat head, so that's more tunable, isn't it? So that's interesting. Quite unusual. There's not many of these made, I don't think, was there? In well, the Ford Jaguar Heritage Trust, there was only two manual P digital for me. Only two? So this is one of two. Wow, I don't suppose you know where the other one is at all. Well, <laughs> if I did, I'd buy it. <laughs> I imagine. This is unusual, isn't it? Because this has got the, is it the four-speed MOS box? That's a four-type, uh, four-speed uh, remaining E-type that's fitted in this room. E-type one, actually, it's a MOS box. The gearbox number was KX7000 on this. Okay. Uh, so when it was checked, the rock reference with the build sheets, uh, it's the KX7000 on the build sheet. So right. I know that it's original Jaguar. So it's uh, unusual to find a uh, original uh, Jaguar range band of what's on there. Obviously, that has got the synchro mix on, hasn't it? It has, yeah. yeah. So that makes it a little bit easier to drive it. Yeah. Yeah, excellent. How long have you had the car then, Bill? Uh, it's coming to 26 years now. 26, that's fantastic achievement. And how, what sort of state was it when you first got it? It was pretty much a barn find. A barn wow. I mean, the, the roof was completely like a cheese grater. Cheese grater roof. The roof. Wow, uh, okay. Things had gone, big holes, for instance, uh, behind the wheel. Uh, Oh, we really like to get in large holes. Um, so it was in a poor state. Right. The amazing thing was um, the guy that owned it um, yeah. from Newbury put it on uh, a jump start from his discovery yeah. and it fired up. It fired up. I don't know how long it's wow. been since it owned no. it, but it, I became interested in it at that point. Yeah. Uh, so we did a deal and Excellent. Uh, it was 2250. Wow. It was a lot really because you could have bought a you know, a running car. I was just thinking, what year would that be been roughly? Uh, 1998. Oh, definitely. I think you could have got a good, good way uh, for HE one for about three grand, really probably. Good. So, quite a fun. But wow. then there was something about it that... Yes. It was not why I was drawn to it. No. But the first time I drove it, I, I realised it was far quicker than anything else that could be built compared, yes. you know, in comparison to automatics. Uh, and then, obviously, the history you've got from there. Yeah, yeah. I, think, I think it's one of the few V12s, excluding the faceless, where it is near a genuine 300 brake, 290, oh, really? yeah. yeah. And you really notice it with these ones, definitely. Yeah. So no no catalytic converters or anything taking the power away or anything. Right. So it goes extremely well. How, how were the seals in the underside when you found it? Do you have to do much worse on them at all? No, they did give you place one uh, floor plan. Uh, but apart from that, I think it was mainly uh, exposed to 
probably conversation chips from storage. Right. It's all surface and top stuff yeah. uh, areas that we're quite doing. Got it. Um, and the underside is, is remarkably was good. It? When right. I started to find out the history, it was then I, I was on the one way road to completion. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so it was, yeah. A lot of money and a lot of time went into it. Well, it looks absolutely fantastic to see the car. It's actually a pleasure seeing the car. But uh, thank you very much, Bill. No, thank, you. thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Good to see you, Peter. I see you here with the Jack Your Breakfast Club, which of course is your idea and it's now progressed onto the stand. How did that actually start, the Jack Your Breakfast Club? Well, the Breakfast Club started uh, nearly eight years ago now. How was that? Wow. Yeah, I, I, basically I wanted to have a regular meeting for, um, for all Jaguar owners, whether they're a member of a club or not, uh, just to get together free of charge, come and go as you please, a, a, a very easy going social sort of gathering um, and I was looking around for somewhere yes and uh, basically the inspiration came because the Jaguar Heritage Trust yes. moved their vehicle collection to the British Motors. It was split all over the place prior to that I think wasn't it? Well it, yeah it, it always has been split up but most of it was was at the old Browns Lane uh, site. Oh, I remember they that. had a museum yeah. there. I remember that one a long uh, time ago. Yes yes, yes. Um, and which was fantastic. Uh, but not that huge. No, quite put smaller. Quite so many on display. Um, so a purpose-built um, area was created at the British Motor Museum, the collection centre. Yes. And um, and they moved there, and half, about half the collection was now there. So it just made what was already a good venue into the perfect venue. Excellent. So we meet there pretty much every month. Every month without fail. Even last week, which I think was quite a wet one if I was. I did see yeah. that. But you still had over 100 cars. A terrible day. Yeah, yes. I didn't expect anybody <laughs> yeah. to go. Uh, but I mean, one of the beauties of this, this meeting is that we don't discriminate with no. the cars in any way, classic or modern. They're all the same to us. Clean or dirty, daily drivers. Or, you know, if you arrive on a trailer, we don't mind. Whatever it is. Excellent. Uh, so a lot of it, even in this way, that will turn out uh, in, well, we have quite a few classics, actually. Mm. Even in that Fantastic. Way. So, That's really, really good. So I guess the main reason we're here is uh, you launched a book, was it three years ago? The no, curve, no. curve, curve, more than that? I don't know, I can't remember. It's about that. It's about that, isn't it? Seems for a bit of a lifetime. It ago. is a long time ago. And, and I have a vested interest here because this has been a brilliant book that, Thank you. Um, that we've, uh, my family and I have enjoyed many holidays. And you'll see some of the other videos on the channel where I've we've done. I've been watching your oh, have you really? Yeah. <laughs> Not many people say it's that, great. so it's always good to get the compliments, definitely. But, but that's the Curve Road, which is brilliant. And that's got routes right across the UK. And we've been fortunate enough to do the one running up to uh, Hadrian's Wall. We've done the uh, jaunted, jaunting cats in Ireland, and more recently the Highland 1000, which was an epic and amazing thing. But interestingly, you've now got a new book, Peter. I I'm quite it. curious. This is a pre production version you've yes, got in your hand here. Yes. So, so what's different about this one, and what inspired you to do? Uh, well, firstly, what inspired yeah. you to do the first book, and then what about the second the book here? Book, the first book really was, um, well, you, driving, touring has always been my sort of hobby. Uh, and also, it was my living for many years because before I retired, I spent 30 years as a as a as a coach operator. Oh, okay. What I used to do was I specialised in off the beaten track tours. Oh, so I'm pretty well travelled throughout Britain and Europe, really. Yes. Um, and what I enjoy doing for my own holidays is getting in the car and going up on scenic tours. Fantastic. So I started writing a couple of travel features for a classic Jaguar magazine, Excellent. which I still do now. Uh, and I thought oh, I could develop this a bit yeah. further yeah. and do a book. So at the time I had a, a Mark II uh, Jaguar uh, yes. and, and very photogenic car. It is very photogenic, so I used yes. To use it in the magazine features and then I thought, well, we'll take it a bit further, we'll do a little bit more. Yes. So that book 
um, of road, yeah. It was a bit of a lockdown project, writing it. Yeah, some, some of time. the tours beforehand, uh, and, uh, and mostly they are the longer tours. Yes. As in, the Highland 1000 is actually 1112 miles. Yeah, yeah. Give it all, yes, plus yes. there are options of oh, there is. further. Yes. And I thought, after I'd done it, and it's gone really well, yeah. I haven't got a clue whether it will sell or not. Yeah. It's just a, a bit of a hobby. Yes, know. yes. And it did sell. Uh, and um, I thought, well, I could develop that because there's so much that's not in that book. Yes. Different areas uh, and um, make sort of ostensibly what are day, day length drives. Day length, what do you day length uh, They could do them in a day. I don't think many people will. No. You know, no. some of them uh, only 60, yeah. 70, 80 miles over some uh, up towards 200. They could make that a long weekend for them yeah. to do the long yes. weekend. Yeah. yeah, so, um, but what I wanted to do was find some some areas of the country that people perhaps don't know so well. Yeah, that's a fair point. And everything had to be really good. Yes. But knowing the country well and doing a little bit of further research, um, I managed to find 20 tours that are not the same as in the previous book. That's quite a few. You know, no, look forward to them. Um, places ranging from, say, Rutland and the Fence. Yes. Which people have heard of, but probably yeah. never been. No. Fantastic. The Forest of Boland. Yes. A lot of people have don't even know where the Forest of Boland is. I didn't until this morning. That, well, there you are. <laughs> there you are. But, you know, because Fabulous. they head to the, the, the heights of the, the Lake District, the yes. Dales or yes. Scotland, yes. and they walk straight past, drive straight past the Forest of Boland, and it's lovely. So I've tried to highlight some lesser known districts, but they're all really, really good drives. Excellent, excellent. And, and when's this light to come available, well, this one? Hopefully. Uh, I mean, this is a pre production copy, so. Um, it's rough around the edges, but the content is pretty much all there. Yep. Um, I'm hoping to have it printed by the end of the week. Wow. I mean, I brought it here yes. to the NEC, very quickly got a yes. copy made, uh, so that we could show people, you yes. know, because those that have Absolutely. bought the book before, they're interested to see it again, uh, particularly, you know, from the Breakfast Club and whatever. Uh, so, um, within a couple of weeks. Excellent. And I must draw out, so, so the Curve Road feature a lot of your, is Mark II, the Series 3, I think. Was there any others? Oh, and the X-Men was in here. Yeah, okay. the, well, the Series the series 3 XJ was in that. Yes. That spills over to this book, okay. main chapter. Okay. But what was great with this book, and an absolute blessing, I wanted to have a lot of different vehicles. Yeah. It's a slightly more commercial project than that. There's a lot more personal history in, in the Curve Road book. Yes. In this one, I wanted it more as a bit more of a commercial guidebook. Yeah. Um, so it's the same idea where you've got pages of, of text yeah. describing places of interest and, and photographs. But uh, you've also got, such as the Isle of Mull here, you've got the watercolour map, which were yeah, that, that's, that's a bit of a, yeah, I was about to say, it's quite a unique feature, uh, and that's noted in the Curve Road book, and it's good to see that you've got yeah, them again. Yeah, there, right? really, everybody talks more about the watercolour maps than you can my Hey ho, at least it's in the family. Uh, yeah, and then you've got a detailed route description. So um, it's all there, but I wanted it a little bit more commercial. Yeah. Um, but which is why it's called Classic Driving Days, which is a, a generic title. Yes. Really. Yes. And it's not, I mean, yes, they're all Jaguars in here, yes. but you can, no, you can carry out these tours in any, any vehicle at all. Excellent. But we were very lucky, blessed, to be able to borrow quite a few of the Jaguar Dame the Heritage Trust vehicles. Uh, right in the way from the 1935 SS1 airline. Oh, I didn't took, realise that was in there. Took around the Cotswolds. Fantastic. Um, right the way up to a Project 7. With oh, the Project 7, with right, we yes, round all Oh, excellent. Um, and uh, it was absolutely fantastic. So we've got, oh, and there, Queen Mother's oh, look Mark, at that. Uh, Mark 7M. That is lovely. Uh, which opened every door for I photographs. So we got the Royal Burley Park at Stamford there. That's nice, but um, yes. That was fantastic. Uh, and here, on the next chapter there, we've got the SS1 airline. What an amazing, look, what an amazing looking car. What uh, a great location to do it as well. Absolutely. I mean, you know, turned so many heads. So that really is a massive selling point for the, 
Definitely. So once it's all printed up, where, where can we obtain a copy well, then, Pete? through me, really. Um, you can look on the Breakfast Club website. It'll have uh, a page there about it, Excellent. as it does for the curve bar. Yeah. Or you can contact me directly. Um, my email is leapingcatmedia at gmail.com. I can put and the detail in the link, I think, for that. What That'd we're be doing, good. yeah. And what we're doing, we're actually offering free postage. Oh, uh, Knowing Jaguar drivers, as I do, being one... Yeah. <laughs> we, we never want to pay full price. Really. That's very true. So the book very is £20, pounds, but you'll get free postage. Fantastic. Brilliant. Yeah. Or a little bit cheaper, if you come along to the meetings, it won't cost you £20. There you go. Very uh, good. As well, we'll give you 10% off. Good to know. And also, good to get to one of the meetings as well, if you have your Jaguar yeah, well, car. They're definitely. so well attended. Yeah, yeah. We have indeed. minimum, say, 100 cars every month. In the summer, on some of the big events, 700 yes. cars. Which yes. Is. Fantastic. Yeah. Brilliant. Well, thank you very much. My pleasure. Thank you, Richard. Thank you. Good yeah. to see you. Thank you. Thank Great you. Great show. Thank you. Thank you very much for watching my video, I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please consider giving a like and maybe a subscribe. A big thank you to all of my interviewees that joined me on the video and also a special shout out and thanks to the XJS Club, the Jaguar Breakfast Club and also the XJ Forte Register as well.